What's up guys, it's Clay here with Ferris Engineering. Today, what we got scheduled, we are going to be installing our air oil separator here on my 2013 BRZ. Along with um, the air oil separator, I'm gonna be installing our automatic drain back kit, as well as our coolant add-on kit and our rear cam bomb plate. All right, before we get started here, um, I just kinda wanted to go over real quickly about what comes with each kit. Um, as you see here, we do have our pre-assembled AOS. Um, it's going to come with six feet of half inch hose, six inches of three eighths hose, a bracket for the AOS, and then the hardware bag. And what you're gonna get in that hardware bag is gonna be eight zip ties. It's gonna have that in there. Um, it's gonna have this um, three eighths to half inch hose adapter, hose clip, a 20 millimeter uh, button head with a washer. It's gonna have two MPTs. Um, since this is a used kit, we actually already have this one installed. So it's gonna have two of those MPTs, a rubber, rubber nipple plug. Um, and then on the back side here, um, it will come with three 16 millimeters and three washers. But as you can see here, this plate actually is included with the coolant add-on kit. And with the coolant, you'll get these four additional bolts and washers. Um, and then with the coolant kit, you're going to get five feet of um, this heater hose. You're going to get two uh, banjo bolts. And you're going to get four of these little um, the banjo washers. And then you're going to get the banjos right here with four, um, whatever you call them here, uh, hose clamps. And then onto the automatic drain back kit, you're gonna get a pre-assembled hose and fitting. Um, you're gonna get two of the um, gaskets. And then I actually already have um, the, the check valve installed here. Again, this is a used kit, so I'm kinda just going with it. Uh, but let's get on with the install. Okay, so the tools needed for this install is going to be a ratchet a 10 millimeter socket and or wrench, scissors, some extensions, a wobble set, needle nose pliers, a four millimeter Allen wrench, seven eight inch deep socket, 19 millimeter deep socket, one fourth inch Allen wrench and a monkey wrench. All right, so first things first, we're actually gonna need to get access to the bottom side of the battery. There's a bolt that we need in order to install the bracket. Um, so first things first, you're going to want to uninstall the negative terminal and then the positive terminal. After that, we will also remove these 10 millimeter nuts on the top side here and then this bracket and these J-hooks will be able to come out. Alright, so now with the battery removed, we also will remove this black plastic tray that the battery rests on. And then let me get a little bit closer here for you. See if we can get up in there. So now there's gonna be this bracket right here, which you can probably barely see. There we go. There's this bracket right here. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts that we need to take off. And then we'll set this bracket aside, but we will reuse it, so do not throw it away. All right, now, so we need to remove the PCV hose that runs from the intake manifold to the PCV valve. Um, if you haven't already removed this cover, this is how you're gonna do that. There's two little clips on the back that you press in, and then you press forward, and that cover will come off. So set that aside for now. And then, if you look closely, it's gonna be this left side here. So you're gonna take this part of the hose off, and then where it feeds into the PCV and the engine. Now once you have the hose off, um, we're gonna remove this PCV fitting here in the back. It's very hard to see. I don't think I'm even gonna be able to get the camera to get in there, but you will need your 19 millimeter deep well socket with your wobble set and an extension. And then we will remove this piece. And that's what the OEM um, PCV fitting looks like once you have it removed. I don't know if you can see that down there. 
So that is the installed MPT. Um, you're only going to want to do about 12 foot pounds to put this in. Um, not very much there. All right, now we're going to remove the other side of the PCB system. It's going to be right here. It's going to go into the intake, and then the other end goes into the block. So we'll pull this hose off. All right, as I was removing this second um, PCB hose, I found it was a little bit easier with the set of 45 degree needle nose. Um, there is a clip down that bottom side, so it might take a little bit pulling, but you want to be very careful not to break that fitting on the other side. Next step is going to be to loosen the 10 millimeter nut you see right here on the wiring loom. Um, and then we're going to be able to slide the bracket in behind it. So now, hold on, let me do it. Okay. So now I have the bracket slid in behind that bolt. Now that bracket that we took off earlier where the bracket was sitting, um, there's another fitting down here. We're gonna put that bracket back on and that will be the second location to where you use one of the supplied button heads to mount that to the car. There, it's a better view of the bracket fully installed. The 10 millimeter is now tight back there on the firewall. And then, like I said, you're gonna use that supplied button head washer to put that bracket back on. And then through the old bracket and the new bracket is how you will tighten that. And then make sure to tighten the other 10 millimeter as well. Now it is time to install the AOS. Um, what you're gonna do, depends on if you are doing the coolant kit or not. If you have the coolant kit add-on, you're going to not have, or you will have this extra uh, piece back here. And then you're gonna have these four nuts or bolts and washers installed. And then you're gonna have these three open. But if you do not have the coolant add-on, you will not have this plate. So you'll just be using these three locations. And they're fairly simple. You put it right here where the holes are on the bracket and you thread it into the AOS. Now when you're tightening these, your Allen wrench, you only want to go to about 10 foot pounds. All right, so to reiterate, if you are running the air oil separator in an OEM configuration that is using the intake manifold port, you have to run a PCV valve in the air oil separator, which Clay will do here in a second. And that basically ensures that the intake manifold doesn't create a massive vacuum on the air oil separator which then actually pulls oil up out of the engine and into your intake manifold now this does happen and if this does happen to you by accident and you stumble upon this video remove this put the oem pcv valve in its location and then let the car idle and run and clear out the oil and everything will basically go back to normal uh, obviously check your oil level after that okay so since I will be doing an OEM type install for naturally aspirated, as you can see here, I have removed that black MPT that was already on there. If you remember earlier, I said this was a used unit. So I removed that um, and installed the factory PCV that was in the engine block. Um, and then we are going to start and go from left to right on how we will plumb these hoses. Okay, so now um, there is the far left side plumbed down to the MPP, NPT that we installed into the engine block. Now we're gonna move on to the PCV valve that I installed since I'm doing the naturally aspirated OEM type install. Um, in doing so, we are going to need to utilize um, this smaller hose, this 3 8 hose that came with the kit that we will put on to um, the, the factory PCV valve here. And then we will use this hose adapter to adapt to the larger um, half inch hose. And then we are gonna plumb this directly into the intake manifold. All right, so there you can kind of see how the fittings go together with the adapter there in the middle into the PCV valve directly there into the intake manifold. And then we're gonna go on to the third um, nipple here. So this is going to plumb all the way across here back into um, the intake inlet tube right here. There is the third tube um, that we have plumbed into the inlet tube here. So it just, I just put it right over top of the engine. Um, I'm sure to try possible is best. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the fourth one, 
The fourth one, you are going to plumb it back into the factory location on the engine block. So I'm gonna go right over the top here, through here, and then back into that last location. As you can see here, I have all four of the hoses connected. And then this last one, it is, it's kind of difficult to get in there. Um, but once you get it started, you kind of look on this side. I don't know if you can really see it there even, um, but you can see the very end of the tube. Um, I used both hands. Um, I did get it on there. It took me about a minute or two. It's kind of frustrating, but you can do it without taking all the AC and everything out there. Um, but all right, next part of the install. The AOS is 100% installed and plumbed correctly for a naturally aspirated OEM type install. Now we're gonna move on to the auto drain back kit and rear cam block plate install. First things first, on the bottom side of the AOS, you're gonna to run to remove um, the supplied flare cap that comes with the kit because we will no longer be using this since we're using the auto drain back kit. As mentioned before, I said this is a used kit that I'm installing here on my car, so some of the stuff is missing. But if you have the rear cam block plate, um, it comes with a plug from us as well as an additional O-ring. Um, you will want to remove this center plug as we will be installing the check valve in it here in a little bit. As you see here, is already installed, um, and then we'll go from there. All right, so um, installing this um, check valve here. The easiest way I found is just use a large uh, monkey wrench, um, but you want to pay very close attention. Make sure that arrow is pointing directly at the cam block plate. Um, reason for this being is that we want the oil to flow into the engine. We do not want the air to come out of the engine. Um, so make sure the side with the arrow and the supplied O-ring that's already installed is installed inside of the cam block plate. I forgot to mention, um, just so you don't over tighten it, you only want to put this check valve in to about 16 foot pounds. Um, not, not much more is needed. The rear cam cover is located on the back side of the engine here, right by the AOS that we just installed. Um, there are going to be three 12 millimeter bolts that I have already loosened, as you can see, just to give you a better visual. We're going to take those bolts off. And then we're going to use the plastic scraper to help pry um, that, cam that cam plate off. Now when you get the cover off, um, you'll notice there is some silicone on this one. Um, so what you're going to want to do is um, for the o-ring not to leak, you will need to clean the sealant off the back side of the engine um, just to make sure that the o-ring will fill in the, the voids. Now to do this, we're gonna use that plastic scraper um, and then you're just gonna wanna get in there. Let me get a light on here for you so you can actually see it. Um, there's the light, you can, you can see where the, the plate came off. There's a little bit of oil dripping out there, but we're gonna use this plastic scraper to get all as much of the debris off as possible. Now it is time to install our rear cam block off plate um, with the auto drain back check valve in there. So we're gonna use the, the factory bolts for this. Um, just make sure that that O-ring is on there. Like I said earlier, you do have a second O-ring if for some reason you notice some leaking, but make sure to get off as much of that sealant as possible before installing this. Um, but you're gonna only wanna install this to about 12 to 15 foot pounds on each bolt. Um, and here we go. Now using your supplied auto drain back hose, um, it's basically gonna install like this. The straight end's going to attach to the bottom of the AOS, and then you're gonna have the curved end go into the check valve that we just installed in the cam block plate. There, you can see the drain back all installed. Um, you will wanna use an 18 millimeter wrench um, to tighten those fittings on. This is what I used. Um, but make sure there are no kinks in the line. You may have to, to twist it a little bit once you get the fittings tighted or tightened, um, but just make sure that there are no kinks in that line. All right, now for the coolant add-on, um, you're gonna put your banjo bolt washer, and you'll have your banjo there with another banjo washer, and then you're gonna thread these on the back side of the AOS um, where the two openings are on the uh, coolant plate. There you can see um, the banjo bolts on the back side of the AOS. You just wanna put these on hand tight for now. We will tighten these down at a later point. All right, so there are two hoses here that we are going to have to disconnect for the coolant. Um, I removed 
um, the cold air intake kind of get out of the way so I can show you. So there's this hose right here that we will remove. It's kind of like a U-shaped. And then back behind it, uh, back here where you see my finger at, I don't even know. That's a little better. You see that clip back there? That's the other hose that we're gonna want to remove as well. Um, these are the ones that we recommend, recommend removing. Okay, so with that shorter hose completely removed and this hose right here on the back just disconnected from the throttle body right here, we will have to reroute this hose. Um, as far as cooling is concerned, this is not a big issue as long as it is routed um, another way. But we recommend using this plug and the very bottom um, nipple down here for routing to the AOS. Um, as far as routing to the AOS, it really does not matter as it's going to be a, a, a loop. So whatever you think looks best, you can you can hook it up that way. All right, as you can see down there, um, I have both of the coolant hoses connected. Um, one is kind of hidden, but like I said, the, the one that's from the factory, you want to, um, let me see if I can get a, my finger down here. This line right here is the one that's uh, factory that you're gonna use on this top nipple plug right under the intake manifold. Um, and then the bottom one that we removed from the shorter hose is the one that I routed to, let's see, the back side here um, on the left side. And then the right side, um, you can see I, I went underneath the intake manifold directly into this one right here and then you can barely see it but up underneath there there is a, another plug um, or another hose that connects to that bottom inlet down there one last thing um, before you start the car up and everything make sure you have the battery back installed which i have not done so but i will do that here shortly um, but make sure when you start the car you get out you look you make sure there's no leaks um, oil isn't going the wrong places that sort of thing um, but like i said if you have any questions shoot us an email all right, guys, that concludes the install of our air oil separator with coolant add-on, as well as the auto drain back kit. If you have any questions at all about this install, please send us an email, sales at veris-engineering.com. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down low, and until next time.